Skip it up and that up. What's going on, guys? Rich Review Tech USA. You hear my voice is back. I don't sound like I have a sandpaper penis down my throat anymore. I was, I felt pretty much fine. I had like a cold, a small one for like two days. Um, but man, it screwed up my voice. I had laryngitis for like a day hardcore. My voice kind of came back. It was almost completely back yesterday, but I was like, I was going to post videos, but eh, I just didn't want to, you know, rush anything and start coughing and all that. So I'm back. I sound pretty much completely normal. And here I am now tonight. I don't want to talk about news stories. I mean, I'm going to talk about one cause it's about Nintendo and it's pretty interesting. That'll be another video, but Everything's about 1080p, 720p, 1080p, 720p, Wii U Sub HD, Shuei Yoshida, 1080p makes you a better gamer, he claims, and I'm just, oh, I'm so tired of talking, everything's about, there's so much other news that could be discussed, but everyone wants to talk about resolutions because they know it gets clicks, and I'm just done. Let's talk about like the games, let's talk about the next gen consoles, what games they're going to have, and other shit, I'm just tired of talking about how many pixels are going to be on the fucking screen. I mean, uh, like I've said, it's important for other reasons besides just the resolution in and of itself, but I've beaten that to death. I just wanted to talk about something different. And tonight I'm going to talk about, we're going to do a retrospective basically of my experience with the now ending seventh generation of consoles and, and how it basically brought me back into gaming and, and just... God, it feels like yesterday that 7th Gen just started and now it's over. Man, when you get older, I'm telling you, for you guys that are like younger than like... If you're 18 and over, you kind of notice how fast time goes. But 18 and younger, time flies, man. It doesn't feel like it when you're very young. But when you get older, like you'll blink and time... Like you'll blink and it'll be two friggin' years later. But anyway, let's get this started. So, pretty much, I gotta thank the seventh generation of consoles for getting me back into gaming because really from like 2002, maybe even earlier than that, really until 2007, I didn't game <laughs> that much anyway. I mean, I had a PS2 and an original Xbox here and there for like a month or two each, but I wasn't anywhere near into gaming like I was this generation. And this generation got me back. Seventh generation got me back into gaming. And it was interesting. I remember I had a sales job. And I remember sitting there like when the Xbox was just announced. And we were debating. Because, I mean, I kept up with it a little bit. We were debating back and forth with this guy that worked there. And he was very pro Xbox 360. And... I saw a little bit of information how the PS3 was going to... I mean, that was at the time that they were supposed to be doing two 1080p streams from two different HDMI ports. I'm like, dude, you're, if you think the 360 is going to give the PS3 any competition, well, which I was dead wrong about that one, because it did, you're out of your mind. The PS3 is going to be so much more powerful. And I didn't really get into the consoles. You know, I, we I talked about them on and off, but I didn't really get into next gen until 2007 and it was kind of an impulse buy that I was thankful I did it because it's kind of this generation inspired me to start review tech USA I got this really nice um another sales job I quit that one to get to go into this one and I got my tax return and I'm like you know what I feel like buying a next gen console. I haven't been into gaming in ages. You know, I have an HD TV that has nothing HD going into it. Granted, it was a no name brand Polaroid, but so on the way home from work, out of all places, too, I just stopped at Toys R Us and picked up a 360, 20, whopping 20 gigabyte 360 with a copy of Gears of War. And I took that home and I had. My TV, I didn't have it set up yet. I had it on a table, and I, you know, I only had TV only had component. That was the that was 2007. The Xbox still only had component, and I remember I hooked it up component and finally got something HD. I popped in Gears of War, and it sh almost shit myself. It was because I didn't do anything with HD gaming at the time. I was in. I was also in a gaming because I, I gamed on PC till like. 1999 got back into PC gaming actually in 2007 as well 
and I had never had anything close to HD. You know, I, I gamed with the Xbox and PS2, maybe with component. I don't even think I, you know, the Xbox I did component, but that's that was an HD. So I never experienced HD gaming, whether it be on PC or console, and it was just like holy shit, it blew my mind. Looking back now, obviously Gears of War, I mean the game was released in 2006, looks dated, but back then, especially when you never experienced high dev gaming, blew my mind. And then I downloaded Dead Rising, the original demo for Dead Rising, and that was what made me flip out and fall in love with console gaming again, or, or gaming in general again. I thought it was insane. I'm sitting there like in a speedo, <laughs> you know, killing zombies with a like a, a lawnmower. I was like, this is insane. I just, yeah, I, I felt almost as excited about gaming at that time as a little kid because I was out of it for so long and so much changed and so much evolved. And get, seeing gaming in HD getting on that HD bandwagon was, it, it, even though I was an adult, it kind of just blew my mind because everything changed so much. It was so dramatic. And to have that hiatus and to come back with everything, you know, being so much different than what you remember it, really like my jaw dropped. It was, I, I was in awe. So now let's talk about the second console I delved into from the seventh generation. And that was the Wii. <laughs> um, the Wii, it was, that was an interesting, that was a, even more impulse buy than the Xbox 360 because I was with my now very, very, very ex-girlfriend at the time and we were at a GameStop and someone must have, which probably should have been a sign for me, <laughs> someone, they actually had one used for like $30 cheaper and the guy said, dude, this guy just brought this back. I mean, he had it for like two days and he, he traded it in used, or it was like a whatever, the, the, there was some story behind it. It was used, but the guy didn't even really use it. He barely had it, and the thing was, the thing was it was brand new. When I unwrapped it from the uh, cellophane, because they didn't have it in the actual box, like there wasn't even that shiny plastic which showed a lot of scratches on the Wii. You didn't see it, you know anything. It looked like the thing was never used. So whatever. I was like, I, I said to my ex at the time, I'll keep her name out of this video because she's a freak. Uh, I was like, well, you play Wii. Let's try this out. It's all the motion thing with the tennis and all that. And she was like, yeah. And we brought it home. And I'll say, man, I, I had that, you know, honeymoon thing that everyone had with the original Wii where you played Wii Sports and it was it was the shit. You know, you, you, when you played Wii Tennis, it was fun. And baseball was fun. But then when you kind of realize that you didn't need to do the motions and you could just kind of flick your wrists, you realized with, and I'm not saying that we didn't have great real games on it. It did. But at the time, it, most of it just felt like a damn gimmick. And I'm like, I just got over it. And I'm like, God, this sucks. This is stupid. I'm playing standard deaf games and I'm sitting here wagging my hand around like an idiot, you know? And, and I had it for two weeks and, and honestly, I brought it, I th I think they actually let me return it. I don't know. We're going back like almost six years now. But that was my oh, very short relationship with the Wii. I know it had other great games. I have a little brother who he had a Wii when I would visit him. I think we played GoldenEye on it, which was fantastic. I know the Zelda games were great on it. And I know they had a awesome Castlevania. They had the Adventure Rebirth, which I played that to the end and I got to the final boss and I couldn't beat it even on easy, which pisses me off because I can, I, I've beaten a lot of other Castlevanias, but that's besides the point. So my relationship with the Wii was very short lived because <laughs> I, I just, it just didn't catch me. And I was disappointed because I'm still a big fan of Nintendo, but I told it like it is. I still think to this day the original Wii should have been high definition and they would have definitely give even even though they sold 100 million units they would have devastated Sony either Sony or Microsoft if they not only brought in that casual crowd but had the HD games that Sony and Microsoft had in the 7th gen but it's spilt milk now too little too late we're already in the 8th generation now the PS3 let's talk about the PS3 cuz that was 
I, I got that one the latest. I got that in late 2009-ish. And actually, I got a refurbished one, my first PS3. I had a fat, and I got it from uh, Dragon's Den, who I don't do business with anymore because they're they're weird. They're kind of getting out of gaming and doing all those card games that I had, have no interest in, and their their used games are very overpriced, and they're not a bad place. I still go there like once every two months, but I used to do a lot more business with them. But anyway, um, so I went up there. And I had a whole bunch of stuff because I traded in to put towards the uh, PS3. And they actually gave me a really good deal on my trade-ins. And they got me a refurbished one. And actually, that thing was in pretty good shape. Had a sound issue, though. And I ended up trading it in for a, a PS3 Slim, not the Super Slim. But that was interesting, man. Because one of the first games I believe I got, thinking back now. I know I got Prince of Persia, which that game sucked from Ubisoft, that like cell shaded one. But then I got Uncharted 2, and then I got Killzone 2, and those those exclusives just blew my mind. I mean, it was like, I mean, you could say we could go into the whole power debate. Is the PS3 truly more powerful than the 360? And people say, yeah, if you utilize the cell, it is. But I think if you look at those games and... It just there's nothing on the 360 that looks as good as Uncharted 2 and Killzone 2 and 3. I mean, those games, <laughs> if they had a way to make them native 1080p, they look like they could be something on next gen. They were they were fantastic, and I really started to enjoy the PS3. I enjoyed the fact the online multiplayer was th- was free. I I enjoyed the just the way the system was and the fat for you guys who haven't used the fat the fat is called fat for a reason that thing was heavy i like the uh touch like the um the touch buttons on it though where you just you would just you know flick it in and it would uh you don't even have to push it down and the disc would pop out that was pretty cool that had backwards compatibility which was pretty sick because they got rid of that with the slim and a lot of models of the fat they got rid of the uh backwards compatibility to cut costs but That was when the PS3 in 2009, a lot of other people jumped on the PS3 in 2009 because that's when it started to uh, come into its own Um, and they started to have good exclusives and the uh, ports weren't as shitty as they were when the system first launched for the first couple of years. And that it was, it's a group that was the PS3 was still is a great system. And I jumped on that at, you know, I was pretty late to the party with the PS3. I pretty much, like I just said, jumped on with everyone else. But the exclusives made the PlayStation 3 great. I mean, you still, even though I went through five damn 360s, (laughs) you still went to for multi-plats to the 360, especially if you played a lot of Call of Duty and stuff like that. But it was an all-around great system, and from the, how they started with the PlayStation 3, it was amazing how much they turned it around in a couple of years. I mean, people were saying Sony was DOA. They were saying that Sony's doom, the PlayStation 3, was what was going to bring them down. I mean, I don't think Sony made as much of a profit as they wanted to even to this day on the PlayStation 3, but they definitely salvaged the PlayStation brand and salvaged the PS3 by hardcore marketing price cuts and making great exclusives and they made the ps3 what it is today and i don't think anyone with how bad they launched that system saw how well no one could have predicted how well it would have done in the long run and they did they they did a 180 with the ps3 and it still blows me away that they were able to do it but anyway here we are it is i'm recording this audio literally at 12 24 a.m on wednesday uh November 13th, 2013, in less than 48 hours, I will be driving home from, hopefully, unless there's a gigantic line with a bunch of idiots in it, which there probably will be, I'll be driving home from Best Buy with a PS4 in hand. What the hell do I want from this generation? You guys heard me bitch about things, praise things, you know, be concerned about things, be happy about things from all the different companies, from Nintendo to Sony to Microsoft. What do I want? I just want good fucking games. That's it. I just want good games. 
I, I want them to stop trying to take away our, our consumer rights and then backtrack on things because they've all pretty much done it, Microsoft being the worst offender. But they've all pretty much done it. You know, just let us have freedom with these damn boxes. Obviously, you know, don't let us hack and mod things in pirate games, of course. That, that's illegal. But just give us the freedoms that we want. You know, let us just buy games. Look, I'm, I'm a PC gamer. I get the whole digital distribution thing. I said it before, way back when Microsoft was still going to do the DRM crap. You know, I, I get it. But when you go to console gaming for a different reason, people just want to plop a damn disc in their console and enjoy the game. You know, and to all the stuff about the hardware and how capable it is, I'm still concerned somewhat. And it's not because I, I, I'm a PC elitist and want 1080p across the board. You know, like I just saw something with, I, I think it was Digital Foundry that had a video up about Dead Rising 3. And the frame rate's dropping hard in that game. And that game is only 720p. You know, that's, I mean, I'm hoping that maybe it really is. You know, even though I, I still think, I mean, developers have said it's a pain he has to program for, that developers need to wrap their minds around that ES RAM that the Xbox One has in it. But, you know, I mean, the power of the consoles concerns me. But all I, all I really care about is the, if the games are good. If they can still offer AAA experiences five or six years from now, I'll be happy. I really will be. You know, all I want to do is sit down with the controller and, and enjoy the damn games. That's it. And if they, if, if Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, even though CNET considered <laughs> Nintendo the number four thing not to buy for someone this Christmas, which I think is a little extreme, but I'll talk about that in my next video tonight, can give me that, can give me amazing experiences, that's all I want. Give me my freedom, and give me good games, and that's all I ask for. I I'm a simple guy. With a small wiener and man booze, but I'm a simple guy. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting Review Tech USA. Have a good one.